the world most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is General John S. Wood, former Chief of Mission of the International Refugee Organization. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. General Wood, a great many GIs will remember you as the courageous commander of the 4th Armored Division, which swept across France and into Europe during World War II. Since then, we understand you've been with the International Refugee Organization in Austria and have watched our foreign policy work at close range, firsthand. I wonder, could you tell us, as a close observer, is our Marshall Plan and our foreign policy being administered wisely in Europe? Well, sir, I can't, uh, of course, speak as an expert because I've been in Europe too long. But uh, I have been close to it for five years to all the developments in uh, Austria and formerly in Germany. Well, do you believe that we ended the Marshall Plan program too soon? Did we see uh, the, on the uh, economies, the civilian economies on the country? I think the Marshall Plan funds made uh, possible a tremendous improvement in the European economy. Did we stop and it too the, soon? And that the standard of living improved. I think uh, the changeover uh, to the to the direct uh, or more direct military uh, expenditures and the uh, the lessening of the the increase of prices due to the Korean War and also the perhaps the lessening of the funds spent has uh, has created difficulties among the well, population you, of Europe. Don't you feel, sir, that the uh, creation of uh, military expenses in Europe? by the United States was necessary? I think it is, I think uh, any, any uh, steps taken to improve our defenses uh, are necessary. I think that we perhaps are a little more frantic and frenzied in our, uh, our apprehensions about Russia than uh, we need to be. I don't think the Russians uh, are going to make a direct military move in West Europe. I never have thought so all the time I've been there. Then yeah. why are we building an army there? I think the purpose uh, of our building uh, defenses in Europe is to bolster their strength and to hearten them and to, uh, to increase their spirit of resistance. Uh, and it may be that those things are useful. General Wood, uh, you, of course, are aware of the fact you've been out of the country a long time, but this is an election year, and it's a particularly important election year to our people, and our listeners are sort of searching their souls to see whether we have spent too much. Now, in your, or whether we are overreaching ourselves as a nation. Now, in your opinion, sir, <coughs> we, we as a nation can take some pride and satisfaction in our Marshall Plan expenditures. You've said that that's been a proper thing and that our nation can be proud of those I think expenditures. We can be proud of it, sir. And that we have, by and large, gotten uh, some value received for it. I'm sure we have. Now, you are making a difference between that and our present military expenditures. Now, in general, do you think that perhaps this year we are trying to spend 
more than we should in Europe on military affairs. I believe that we could take a much calmer view of the whole situation and a longer-range view and uh, put the economic uh, basis of, uh, of opposition to Russia uh, before the military. I see. Now, in your view, you're saying that, that we can take a longer view. So that means that you don't think that war is imminent. I don't think war is imminent, and I have not thought so for five years. You think that it's the Russian plan to try to weaken us economically rather than to attack us That's my time. belief, and that it's a very long-range plan, and that, that we must... Uh, plan accordingly. That's and right. It, if, if that's the Russian plan... Over a period of years, and it may be 10, 20 years, who we, knows? We have, since that's the Russian plan, is to attack us economically, make us weak, then our first consideration, in your view, should be to protect ourselves from that, from, our, from, from economic derangement at home. I feel that we must keep ourselves strong, and by that I mean economically and uh, to keep our morale high. Well, I gather from what you say, General, that you believe Russia is winning her her campaign against us. If she is I, weakening us economically... I, think, I don't know. You know more about what uh, is being done to us economically than I do. I haven't been here very long. Well, you just paid your taxes about a little while taxes ago. and the general feelings that I sense of apprehension and, uh, and doubt and the confusion here lead me to believe that uh, Russia may be succeeding. And actually, Russia has succeeded in taking a large part of the uh, population of the world you without believe, losing a, a man. Do you believe that the, the people of Europe are as necessary uh, to us militarily as we have led them to believe? I think we should change our emphasis and in, from enlightened self-interest uh, to sort of an inquiring self-interest. And uh, I don't believe that the people of Europe are in the long run essential to the existence of the United States. We can get along without them in your view. I think we should do everything we could to bolster them, to strengthen them, and uh, within our possibilities. I don't believe, finally, that the security of the United States rests anywhere but in our own hands. Uh, General, you, of course, sir, have a reputation as a great fighting soldier, both with our own armies, and I believe you went to the Cold of Guerre. You, are, you also know something about the fighting abilities of other nations, having fought two wars in Europe. I'm sure that our audience would like some quick evaluations from you as to what you think we're getting for our dollar in the form of fighting armies. Now, do you think that the, that the French, for instance, are in a mood to fight now and that we can create a fighting force in France? I think the French are admirable soldiers. I've seen them uh, in battle. I've seen them uh, in time of war uh, making the greatest of sacrifices. I believe that they are a that their pride lies in their nation, and uh, I am quite doubtful about the value of the, of the uh, army that's being created on a basis merely of formulas and uh, uh, in a European sense. You mean, you mean a united European army? I don't believe it has any great value now. What about uh, the Germans? Do you think that our efforts to create, uh, to invite the Germans to join an international force might be successful? I think the Germans are great soldiers. I don't believe that the Germans are either are going to, f to be willing to fight for, uh, for a divided Germany. You think that then that we, uh, that our efforts to create an international fighting force in Europe uh, <clears throat> might not be as successful as we had hoped. I think the steps that we are taking uh, may be successful in time, uh, but I think it'll be a very long-range thing. It may take generations. In but the meantime, you would spend the money for something else. I would spend the money where it would strengthen us most. Uh -huh. Well, now, so we've had on our show, we've had a number of Americans who have said that we must plan for at least a 15-year period of making our nation strong, in which a large proportion of our 
national expenditures must go to arms. Now, is it your view that we should take a long-range view and should make our own nation strong and most of our money should be spent on our own armaments? It, in my view, we must rely on ourselves finally for our security. If we take a calmer view of the whole thing, if we can watch our own uh, expenditures and uh, find out how much we can afford, then, in my opinion, we must uh, gauge our uh, efforts to that. Economically, can we just cut ourselves off from the rest of the world? Well, I don't think so, but, uh, I mean, if we can avoid it, no. But in my opinion, in the long run, we can exist no matter... If we have to. No matter who has any particular island. Uh, General, I'm sure that our audience would like to have your view on this. If worse should come to worst, and if our nation in this generation should have to fight the Russian power complex, do you believe that we as a nation still have the strength to build a fighting army that could deal successfully with the Russians? I do, I do. We dealt with the Germans when they had all of Europe. We dealt with the Japanese when they had all of the Pacific. Well, General, I'm sure that our audience has understood your message tonight, and that is that you think that our emphasis uh, should be on making our own nation strong militarily. Thank you very much for being with us tonight, sir. Thank you, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Donald I. Rogers. Our distinguished guest was General John S. Wood, former Chief of Mission of the International Refugee Organization. Before a businessman employs an important executive, he wants to know all about him. Is he dependable? Trustworthy? A person of good character? Now, because we think that you want to know much the same things about the watch you buy, we give you facts about Longines. Thus, an untarnished reputation is one reason why Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medal awards. Dependability? Dependability is a reason why Longines watches are official for timing championship sports everywhere. Accuracy? No other watch has won so many honors for accuracy from leading government observatories. Now, when all these facts are considered, we think that most people will agree that Longines is trustworthy, dependable. In fact, a watch of good character. So if you wish to buy and own, or buy and proudly give just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world, for graduation or some other important occasion, your choice might well be Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.